to worship. So come on, let's go. All right, let's sing this out, guys. I was an orphan lost at the fall, running away when I'd hear you call. But Father, you worked your will. And I had no righteousness of my own. I had no right to draw near your throne. But Father, you loved me still. And in love before you laid the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone Oh, Take that truth in, guys it's by nothing that we did. It's only by Jesus coming down and leaving his throne for us. Come on, let's sing this. You left your home to seek out the lost. You knew the great and terrible cause. But Jesus, your face was sad. And I worked my fingers down to the bone. But nothing I did could ever atone. But Jesus, you paid my debt. By your blood, I have redemption and salvation. Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown. And you rose that I might be a new creation. I am born again by grace and grace alone. I was in darkness all of my life I swore I knew the day from the night Spirit, you made me see I swore I knew the way on my own Head full of rocks, a heart made of stone but Spirit, you moved in me And at your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened on my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shown. Gone into a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Heaven citizen by grace and grace alone. So I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone. I will run the race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. It's only by your grace. by his grace guys I want us to take that truth in there's no amount of work there's no good deeds that could ever impress him enough to get us into heaven it's only by the blood that Jesus shed and that makes him so worthy of all of our praise worthy of every single song we could ever sing to him everything our entire lives Let's sing this out. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, 
Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Sing worthy And holy There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Oh Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And oh, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around. Show 
And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken And I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken So Father, I ask that you lead us in your love To our families, to our communities, to those around us, Lord most importantly, lead us in your love to you. Teach us to love you. Teach us to trust you. That when the world gets crazy, when things get chaotic, we have a firm foundation on who you are, Jesus. Not on what we do, but on the promises that you have given us. So Father, I just pray that you speak to us today. You bless all the families represented here right now. The best that we know how, we choose to worship and lay down our lives at your feet, Jesus. So we love you, we praise you, and we pray all these things in your mighty, precious name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. You guys, enjoy the rest of the service. Great to be hanging out with you again, Akuo. If you have hung out with us at all this year, you know that the word that God spoke to us, to Akuo's church, to live out this year is ready because we are ready as currently constructed. It hasn't been a year about building ourselves into something new. No, this year has been about uncovering the things that are already within us and the ways that God has already created us and living those out. Now, a few weeks ago, we kicked off our sermon series called Sent Out. And during that message, we saw Jesus look at the crowd of people following him become overcome with compassion to the point that it shook his bowels. And then he told his disciples this, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. So we have done that. And we have learned that when we are praying for those workers, to be in those fields, sometimes we are the ones that are called to go and work in those fields as well. So when we get called to go and work these fields, the fields that need to get harvest, we're going to need some help. Really, we're going to need some direction. And luckily, Jesus has given us that. As a matter of fact, last week, Pastor Zach walked us through what it looks like to find the person of peace in a field that we are working in to get a little bit of that help. And how when we follow the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, things seem to work out. And really, it seems like the Holy Spirit equips you for whatever you might be going up against. It's like what I did last week. Me and my family all made a big trip out to Big Bend National Park. We slept three nights in a tent, uh, barbecued beside the mountains, went on hikes in the wilderness. Y'all, we did it all and we had the best time possible. Even the kids like enjoyed it. That's how much fun it was. However, when traveling to a place like this, there are precautions that we have to take because the wildlife there is, you know, wild. And one of the biggest threats that we had to be careful of were bears, black bears to be exact, which we all know is the best bear. Anyway, as we were getting packed, we needed to make sure that we had some bear spray which, as you can imagine, is some spray that you unleash on a bear that gets too close and it makes him walk away or run away, hopefully. We also brought like a small pocket knife, which I'm not sure uh, what that would really do against the bear breaking into our tent, but whatever, we had it just in case. Now, in addition to that, we also had to take all kinds of uh, rules given to us by the park to make sure that the bears didn't want to come into our camp. 
We couldn't leave any food or crumbs out because it would attract the bears. And then they would always come back for more food because they're like, hey, I found food there one time, right? Uh, just like our favorite restaurants. We went there once and it was great, so we keep going back. We weren't supposed to leave like toiletries out for the same reason because maybe a bear would want to eat it. And there was actually this giant metal box uh, made to store all of our stuff in so the bears couldn't get to it. It was a lot of things. However, it kept us safe. We didn't see any bears, even though we did get a few reports of them in the vicinity of our camp. And in the same way, there are rules and precautions that we have to take all the time, right? If we want our car to run, we have to make sure that we pay attention to the fuel gauge in the car. We have to follow that rule. If we want to stay dry in the rain, well, we carry an umbrella or a raincoat with us. If we want to stay healthy, we got to go to the doctor sometimes to get checked up. We need to eat well, do things like that. We see precautions and rules all the time in our lives. It might not be for us being thrown into a hostile environment, but they are there to protect us. Now, when it came to Jesus sending out the disciples, the ones that had become apostles, they were getting thrown out into a hostile place. In a similar way, how we were getting thrown into the wilderness in Big Bend. So let's take a look at how Jesus looked at it. Here is how Jesus' friend and disciple Matthew recorded him sending them out. Jesus said, look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Okay, here Jesus is telling the apostles. Remember, every one of the apostles was a disciple, but not all of the disciples were sent out apostles. Okay. Jesus is telling these apostles, I'm sending you out, sending you out to a place where you will be sheep, sweet, innocent little sheep. Now, even though it isn't great, it's really not that bad. Sorry, that's an awful joke. <laughs> so being a sheep isn't the worst, except when you are a sheep in the middle of wolves. And here's why. Sheep really only have two defense mechanisms, traveling in a pack and running. So here's what happens when wolves attack a herd of sheep. The wolves attack the herd and the herd scatters, which separates them from the herd. And they aren't as fast as the wolves and they don't have their strength in numbers. So that actually opens them up for wolves to attack them. Their defense of running away actually turns a handful of them over to the wolves. And this is what Jesus is telling his apostles they are going to be when they are sent out. Defenseless sheep that when they act in their own defense, it's actually going to work against them. Which is an amazing illustration. But what does Jesus mean by this? Who will the wolves be for these apostles, right? They need to be on the lookout. Well, he actually talked about who the wolves were in an earlier recording of his life by Matthew. Here's what Jesus said. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. So Jesus is saying that the false prophets, the ones that say they are sheep, are the ones that will be the wolves. These people that are saying they are sheep like the apostles are the ones that are saying they are following God in the best way possible, but they actually aren't. They can be identified by how they are acting. Jesus explains you, to you here that you can identify the wolf by their fruit, by the way that they act. It doesn't matter how much the wolf dresses up like a sheep. If they are destroying the sheep around them, they're a wolf. And who Jesus is talking about here are the people he's been speaking against the entire time. We've been reading about it in the entire account that Matthew has given us. These would be the temple officials, the religious elite of Jesus' time. Jesus is telling the apostles that these guys are the wolves. This is the danger over here. And when they go and start sharing the good news of Jesus with Israel, they don't need to worry about the sinners, the tax collectors, the adulterers, the spiritually unclean. No, they need to be on the lookout for the people that say they are holy. They need to be on the lookout for the church people. And for some of us that have been a part of different churches throughout our lives, we know these people. We've seen them in action. They're the ones that will act super holy, right? but really be looking to tear down anyone that doesn't live up to the standard of life that they have created. They say, oh no, we're just trying to help. We're just talking about what this person is doing and spreading this gossip, spreading the cheese man, because we're, we're just praying for them. We want everybody to be praying for them. But in reality, they are the ones causing more damage. 
They aren't helping them, they're hurting them. Akuo, we cannot be that. We are here to lift people up. We are here to be in community with one another. We are here to be generous to one another with our grace and our resources. We have to be a place where the community can thrive, a place where people can feel comfortable to go when they have been attacked by these wolves in other churches. We are ready to love people the way Jesus did. Okay, let's get back to the scripture. Jesus tells the apostles that they are going to be the sheep amongst the wolves, but he also gives them advice on how to deal with these wolves. Let's see what he says next. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. Y'all, we haven't even finished two sentences into this and we have a bunch to talk about. Here, the way Jesus says to deal with these wolves is to act like two other animals. The snake, some translations will, will call it the serpent, and the dove. So Jesus says, be, be shrewd like the snake. Say that a couple times. Be shrewd like the snake. What we know about snakes is that they are cunning. They move in a way that isn't really noticed. They slither across the ground without much noise. And they hide themselves very easily. But what does shrewd mean? I mean, I know Zach talked about it some last week, but let's look at it some more. Let's look at it, what it is translated from Greek and how that can make a difference in how we understand this. So the Greek word uh, that it was translated from into English right here is phronimos. Phronimos, which is wise, having or showing keen mental discernment and good judgment. So when we are being phronimos, like the snake, then we are being incredibly discerning and using good judgment. There's another time that Matthew recorded Jesus using this exact word, and it's in Matthew 7. Here Jesus said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, phronimos, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Here, Jesus is explaining to us that it is phronimos, wise, for us to listen to his teaching. This is actually the same verse that we talked about all of last year. Being sturdy, having our faith and our lives built on the solid rock of Jesus. Jesus is telling us to be wise, shrewd, discerning like the snake, because those wolves aren't gonna fight fair. So the apostles have to be ready to move and think like a snake, to be able to hide, to be able to be out of sight. But not just like the snake, they also needed to act like a dove. To the ancient Jewish people, doves are peaceful. They left when other birds challenged them rather than fighting. This is how the disciples were to behave. They needed to be shrewd by avoiding conflicts and attacks where possible. But when they came, to these other households and towns, the apostles had to hold both sides within them, the wisdom and the innocence, because tough times were coming for them and they couldn't be getting into fights with all these other people. So here's how Jesus continued. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand before governors and kings because you are my followers, but this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and the other unbelievers about me. So here Jesus is building on the idea of the wolves. He's explaining exactly what their opposition will look like. The courts Jesus is talking about here could be either the civil or religious courts. So these would not be trials of public opinion that were led by people with torches and pitforks. No, they would actually happen in the legal system. The legal system may have been stacked against them, but it was part of the system nonetheless. And this is part of what actual persecution looks like right here. Being handed over to judicial systems to get corporal punishment because of believing in Jesus. Real harm was done to people because they followed Jesus. So if you ever feel like you are being persecuted about your beliefs, I want you to think about Jesus sending out the, the apostles. They were going to suffer and eventually probably die because of their connection to Jesus. And if you feel like you are being persecuted because prayer to Jesus isn't in school anymore, or Starbucks isn't putting trees on their cups during the Christmas season, or anything short of being put in court and beaten because you believe in Jesus, y'all, it is not persecution. The apostles were persecuted because they were spreading the gospel. There are people across the world doing similar work that are actually 
persecuted. I met people that would smuggle Bibles across borders because if they were caught with one, they would be arrested and potentially put to death. Not being in power or being popular amongst a group of people or being made fun of, it, those things are not persecution. Just so we're clear. Okay, rant over here. Let's continue to read the advice that Jesus was giving his apostles for when they were actually being persecuted. Here's what Jesus said. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking, it will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. Right here, Jesus is comforting and encouraging his dudes. He's saying, don't worry about what you're going to need to say when you find yourself in the middle of persecution. Don't worry about the right words when you find yourself standing in front of the governors and the kings because you have something that will guide you along the way. It's the Spirit of the Father. We would know this as the Holy Spirit, the part of God that lives within us once we believe in Jesus. However, at that point, Jesus hadn't fully revealed what the Spirit was. So instead, he calls it the Spirit of the Father. More than likely because the apostles would have remembered another time where God the Father called someone to speak in front of the leader of a nation. In the Jewish scripture, which we would call the Old Testament, there is a book named Exodus. Now, in this book, they are describing the story of Israel being occupied and enslaved by the nation of, is of e Egypt. And in this time, God called one man to go and speak to the Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt. That man was named Moses. God spoke to Moses about this one day through a burning bush. Now, during most of the time, Moses uh, was concerned that no one would believe him, right? As he's hearing these messages from God through this bush, he's like, nobody's going to believe. Moses doubted that people would find him credible, and he doubted that he would be able to find the right words to say when he stood in front of Pharaoh. If they did find him to be credible, he's like, I don't even know what I'm going to say. Moses didn't want to stand before the Pharaoh and say the wrong thing, because that would be lethal. So here's what happened next. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Then the Lord said to Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak and I will instruct you in what you say. As Jesus was telling the apostles that the spirit of the Father would be with them, there's a good chance that this story was in their mind. They were probably thinking back to how God had promised Moses, a hero of the Jewish faith, that he would be with them. Moses may not have totally listened to God on this part because of his fear, and then Aaron came in his brother, and he messed that up. But he did end up going before the Pharaoh and not being harmed by the Pharaoh. In addition to that, the conversations Moses had with the Pharaoh helped free the nation of Israel from the Egyptians. And y'all, the same thing can happen for us today. We may be worried when it comes to being sent out into this world, and the good thing and is that we have a few things going for us that the apostles didn't have going for them. For one, we aren't being persecuted by the leaders of the church like they were. So we probably won't be standing in front of the governors and kings of our days defending our faith with uh, physical consequences, corporal punishment waiting for us. Most of us will be sent out into much lower stake situations like the office speaking to people in the office, or school, or a family barbecue, or maybe even at your kid's sporting event. When we are there, it's important that we are able to share our faith when we're supposed to. Now, don't show up and start shoving it down anybody's throat, but like Jesus told the apostles to do, be sheep, harmless and innocent, be doves, not willing to jump into conflict and have a fight, but also be snakes. Be shrewd and discerning with how you interact with people. And when you're doing that, the Holy Spirit will give you the right words to say. Remember, the harvest has been set up for the workers to reap. They just have to show up. Same thing with this. You just got to show up and be you and let the Holy Spirit give you the right words. 
I know the first place for you to start doing any of these things would be by believing in Jesus. That's how you get the Holy Spirit. That's where you can begin your journey of being sent out, which is something I hope that you get to experience. Now, for you to pass that along, for you to be sent out anywhere and share anything with anyone, you've got to possess it yourself. And to get that love, that relationship for Jesus, it's so easy. There aren't any religious hoops for you to jump through. All you have to do is simply believe. To freely receive a relationship with Jesus, you don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to have it figured out. Like I said, all you have to do is believe. Believe in Jesus and what he did here while he was here on this earth. It's not about behavior or holiness. Just simple belief. So if you want to declare or redeclare that belief today, I can help you do that. All you have to do is have a simple conversation between you and Jesus that we would call a prayer to help you out during this time. Also, I get it. It can be a little bit scary. It can be a little bit weird. What I'm going to do is ask all of our Akuo community to pray along with you. Because here at Akuo Church, no one ever has to pray alone. You always have a community praying alongside you. So if you want to declare in your, your faith in Jesus today, just between you and him, just say something like this. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you and what you did here on this earth. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. Now, what we want to do is take a minute to listen to God. Y'all, we are a Kuo church, which means to listen. So that means we're going to have some time to do just that. I want you to have that time to listen to what God is saying in your life through what we've been talking about today. So what I want to do is make ourselves available to him right now because the best ability that we can have with God is availability. So let's take a moment and close our eyes and imagine Jesus sitting in front of us. And we're going to ask him a couple of questions. If you don't get anything, that's okay. Just keep going back. You might get an inkling or a picture or an understanding of what is right. So for our listening moment today, I want you to ask God these two questions. Just between you and Jesus, just say, Jesus, in what part of my life do I need to be a sheep or a dove? And in what part of my life do I need to be as wise as a snake? We'll take a few minutes to ask and listen, and then I'll come back to finish in prayer. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for today, Jesus. 
Thank you for the way that you continue to speak to us. Jesus, will you please help us be sheeps in the situation that we find ourselves in? Jesus, will you please help us be doves in the conflicts that arise? And Jesus, will you please show us the ways to be as wise as a snake when people oppose us? Jesus, we just ask that you would let the Holy Spirit not only speak to us, but speak through us. Thank you, Jesus, for the way that you're going to move through our lives. We love you. And we pray all these things in your holy and mighty and wonderful name. Amen. Now, before we finish out, uh, I do have a few things to share with you. Uh, today, we talked about getting called out and being sent out, and sometimes that means being put in different positions uh, in our fields. And what I want to do is invite you to serve in the field here at Akuo. So if that's you, I want you to get linked to us today. I want you to let us know that you are ready to do the work that Jesus has given to us in the Akuo community. Y'all, there are so many places that you can get linked into that. One of the ways to see what we have going on around here that you can get linked is by going to akuo.church slash serve and getting signed up there for one of the many A-teams that we have going on here at Akuo on a Sunday. Like I said, so many A-teams happening. One of the big ones that we are asking for right now is being a part of the Cool Kids Baby Room. Y'all, we just need five people to be a part of this for us to open that up. So from there, we can continue to do the work outside of Sunday as well. And one of the things that we will be doing outside of a Sunday to serve and, and harvest in this field that God has given us is the Akuo tradition that we call Trunk or Treat. Now, this is going to happen on Saturday, October the 28th, from 3 to 6 p.m. in the parking lot outside of the church. Y'all, we would love for you to be a part of this. You could help us by making sure that you are one of the cars, uh, that you have a trunk available. You could help us out with a safety team, getting people in and out safely. You, like I said, you could be handing out candy. You could be helping us set up and tear down. You could also put your money or your resources towards getting supplies for this event. To sign up for any of these things, you can go to our website or you can scan the QR code that we have on the screen, or you can go online to akuo.church slash sign up to get signed up for this. Now, if you are looking to drop off candy or make a donation uh, to this event, we are asking that you do this between now and October the 22nd, so we know exactly how much candy that we need to buy to make sure that everybody is taken care of. Y'all, we cannot wait to link to our community for this event alongside you. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about are our community groups. We talk about them every single week because that is what a cool church is about. We exist to be in community with Jesus and one another. This is our one another part. So the reason we want you to be a part of this is because this is a place where you can cultivate community. You can cultivate a group of people around you to help you in your life when things get hard and also a group that will cheer you on when things are good. And these people will be Christ-centered people that will love you in the best way that they possibly can. And it's because of this, I say this all the time, joining a group and being a part of a community that will walk you through life with you could be one of the best things that you do here while you're at Akuo. Now, y'all, we have six different groups happening on different days and times throughout the week. To see all of these, you can scan the QR code on the screen or you can go to akuo.church slash community to see what every single group has going on and which one will fit you the best. Now, the other thing I want to mention here is the way that we are generous here at Akuo. I want you to know that here at Akuo, as individuals, me and my family, and as an organization, we practice that. We practice that with our time, which is why we like to give you chances uh, to link to the community, like we are talking about with Trunk or Treat, like we were talking about with the way we're serving Sorrento, and we also do it with our resources. So I want you to know that if you are generous here to Akuo, if you give resources to Akuo, I want you to know that you're not giving to Akuo, but actually you're giving to your community through Akuo. Now, if you aren't sure where to start, maybe you haven't heard from God yet about what you can be giving through Akuo to your community. Uh, one of the many ways that you can express your generosity is through the biblical method of generosity called tithing, which means giving a first root 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. That could be the place that you start until you figure it out. Now, the celebration of giving might not be a possibility for you right now. Things might be really, really hard for you and your family right now. And if that's you, that's totally okay. 
If things are tough for you right now, please allow us to help you out. We want to be linked to you during your tough time. So if you need anything at all, please reach out to us. Or if you know someone that needs some help, reach out to us as well. To do that, all you have to do is go to our website, akua.church, and click on the Contact Us link. You can also send an email to us at help at akua.church, and you can call or text the church at 210-901-8785. Now, if you are willing and able to give here at Akua Church, the ways that you can do that, one of the ways you can do that is by going to our website, akua.church. When you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. We also have our text to give option. For that, all you have to do is text Akuo, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you want to give to the number 77977. Now, if you don't want to give electronically, we also have our P.O. Box available if you would like to send your gift through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail it to Akuo at P.O. Box 100-125, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. All right, y'all, that's all that I have for you today. I just want you to know that I love and appreciate all of you, and we will be praying for you now, and we will continue to pray for you throughout the rest of the week. And before we go, let me pray over you one last time. Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for the way that you have been speaking to people, the way that you've been moving today. I thank you for uh, the way that the Holy Spirit has just been uh, ministering to the folks that are, that are hearing my voice today. I pray that as they leave here, that they would hear your voice that they would see the steps you want them to take, that they would see the people that you want them to interact with. Jesus, I pray that you would send them out as sheep and doves and snakes, that they would be able to interact with their communities in ways that they haven't seen or felt before, that they would be able to feel your love and your glory through each and every person that is here with us today. Jesus, I thank you for everything, and I love you. We love you, and we pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, that's all that we have for you this week. We'll see you at a community group. Mm -hmm.